Today's video is sponsored by Upstart. Debt is often a necessary evil. There are many times that I've had to go into debt for college, a car, and a home. We've all been there and there's a good chance that you'll be there in the future. Because out of nowhere, you can get hit by an unexpected expense or bill. And it happens because life happens. Saying goodbye to such high interest debt is the first step towards achieving financial freedom. And that's where Upstart can help. Upstart powered personal loans can help you pay down high interest debt because Upstart knows that you're more than just a credit score. So rather than looking at your credit score alone, Upstart model considers other factors like your income, your employment, and other information that you provide in your application to find a smarter rate for your loan. You can check your rate in minutes for loans between $1,000 to $50,000 without impacting your credit score. Don't wait and check your rate today by going to upstart.com slash Mr. Terry. Don't forget to use that URL so they know that we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined by your credit, your employment, and other information that you provide in your application. Again, go to upstart.com slash Mr. Terry to check your rate today. All right, let's get started with the video. Hey YouTube, I'm Mr. Terry, a high school history teacher. Welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. All right, today's video has been highly recommended to me because apparently it's been kind of making its rounds from other history YouTubers and things. And that is Ben Shapiro's tiered list of American presidents. Now, if you're coming to this video, I'm sure you know who Ben Shapiro is. If you don't, he is a superstar amongst the conservative community um, in conservative media. And it looks like here he did a tiered ranking video um, again, on U.S. presidents, I'm interested to see what goes on here. I like looking at these kind of things because I like seeing different perspectives, um, especially of people among different political spectrums. Now, if you've been around my channel for a while, I generally remain very apolitical on things. I do talk about current events and things, but usually with the goal of giving historical context. But anyway, um, there's a couple things I'm interested to see in this uh, that I like to see from these videos. Now, one thing I'm interested in seeing this, and I like seeing this from all tiered videos when it comes to ranking presidents, is... Where do they put presidents that served right before catastrophic events? So like from the American perspective, where were they put, you know, let's say 1850s presidents before the Civil War or 1920s presidents before the Great Depression? I think that's interesting because I think it can tell you a lot about how a person views presidents and how they view politics here. So I'll let you know kind of what I think here. And uh, with that, the original video link is down below. If you want to support Ben and support the original video, it's going to be over there. And, you know, if you have ideas about where you would tier presidents, put those down in the comments. You can get a discussion. Just make sure we keep it civil. All right, let's get started. I have been asked a million times who I think the top presidents were. So today... They're going to tier rank the most notable presidents in American history. Before we jump in, this video is sponsored by Ring. On this tier list, we have five tiers. We have S, which I suppose stands for superior since it's at the top of the list. And then we have yep. A, B, C, works. and F. Now, I'm really missing the letter D here. I will admit to you because there are a bunch of presidents here. There's no I D. I think are actually D, but because they are D, I'm going to put them in the F in category. In a way, S kind we'll of replaces A, though. In a moment. So, so let's start with the exactly presidents who are at the very tip top of the list, the best presidents in the history of the United States. Now, I'm also going to probably assume, too, that like founding father type presidents will probably make their way towards the top of his list. Um, that happens quite a bit. And not even just from people of conservative backgrounds or liberal backgrounds or however you want to define political uh, uh, positions. But um, that's one I would I would assume here, um, and especially amongst uh, amongst uh, probably people of, of conservative leaning. Obviously, on the top of the list, George Washington, our first president, kept the country together, left office peacefully. The father of the country, a great right. man, easy pick, right? George Washington as at number one. And then everybody knows that the other president, there are only two presidents in this top tier. There are not three. Okay, I know the left thinks FDR's in that top tier. I know some people on the right think that Reagan's in that top tier. I'm, I'm actually interested in seeing a couple. I am definitely interested in seeing where he puts FDR and someone like Reagan. You'd think as a conservative, he would put Reagan, who has been more of a modern darling, really, of, of, uh, conservative, uh, of conservatives. And FDR is interesting because I think he can cross a lot of different political uh, uh, platforms. But definitely with him, I, I, again, I could, you could see him going very high or very low, somebody that helped during the Depression and the war, but also down because of the amount of government intervention under the uh, the the leadership of FDR that happens, you know, public works programs and um, changing all kinds of uh, different things. I don't want to get too detailed with it, but um, I'm sure you have an idea of what I'm talking about. Neither one of them are Washington or Lincoln. Lincoln's Lincoln is the other guy in that top tier, tier for sure. beyond simply leading America through the Civil War and uh, to a new birth of freedom. It was Lincoln who, as a as a thinker, helped to revivify the idea that the Declaration of Independence was an inherent part of the Constitution of the United States, that the two were inseparable. The ideas of liberty were not restricted to the Declaration of Independence as a non-operable 
piece of legislation, but actually infuse the Constitution of the United States and that liberty principles were supposed to be extended to all people of the United States, not merely white Americans. So for that reason, Abraham Lincoln is at top of the heap along with George Washington. So that's the easy. But that's if you that's if you interpret the Declaration to be what the Constitution says. Those are documents very uh, uh, they're far away from each other and have much uh, different context, right? I mean, the con the, the Constitution is going to address things that did not, of course, get addressed in the Declaration of Independence. Remember, the Declaration of Independence is just a way to declare, you know, uh, um, independence from Britain. It's not setting law. It's not setting much of anything. Now, again, you would put, you know, if when you usually somebody that would put ranking you know, tiers of, of, of presidents from the colonial era um, that, that were part of the colonial era and then moving into the independent era are, are going to probably also judge those presidents based off of things like George Washington owned slaves and same with Thomas Jefferson. So like, you know, one, one way people would be looking at a, a tiered list is, you know, do, do they, do people think that those things matter in the modern context of how we view those people? Um, or is it more just about what they did as president, not as much about what they did in their, you know, personal lives or something like that? And again, I think there, a lot of people are going to, um, if they do a tiered ranking like this, that's what they're going to do. But you can definitely see with Shapiro, I'm sure he wouldn't say like, yeah, slavery was okay and all that, but understand that's what it was for the time period. Um, that's how it was. And those people got to power. And but they did things that were, you know, net positives, I guess they would say. But again, it, so much of this is perspective, right? Easy part, right? That's that's what everybody does. Washington. And oh, Lincoln by the way, you're going to see Lincoln at the top of a, a list of probably most all people, regardless of current political affiliation. That's just something you find very similar. But people would also probably say, oh, Lincoln, he also, you know, the Emancipation Proclamation only was supposed to be in effect for countries or uh, sorry uh, uh states that are actually part of the union at the time it didn't free the slaves down south like there's another debate of what power would he have in the confederacy and that kind of thing or uh that lincoln you know didn't assert, didn't say that you know uh, uh, black people and uh, black americans and white americans were equal and he talks about that doesn't, doesn't believe they're equal and all those things there's a, a lot of nuanced things to that but and 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 people are going to tear their presidents you know, based on what kind of level of nuance that they actually want to include. The two best presidents, there's very little debate about this. Then things start to get kind of interesting. So I'm going to sort of do this sure. in um, reverse order. I'm going to start with the people who I think are just the worst presidents, like people who just were terrible. So Interesting I, I, of what you think he is going to see as a conservative. Is he going to meet people? Uh, is he going to put anybody they thought had liberal leanings down to the to, down to the bottom there? And then how current is it going to get? Is he going to put President Obama? I assume he would put him... Uh, quite low as someone more recent um, because, you know, his rhetoric uh, about him uh, before. But again, I wonder if he's going to put someone like FDR down there, right? People that were big in government because he declared uh, Shapiro talks about himself as more as a libertarian, wants very much reduced government. So presidents that did a lot of government intervention seeming at the bottom. So I'm interested to see where he puts so, this stuff. Let's begin with the president who I think was I, I, pretty easily the worst president of the United States, Wilson. without much of a question, Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson is a clear F. Woodrow Wilson is garbaggio. Woodrow Wilson was a vicious racist who was in favor of radical expansion of the federal government. He believed right. that the state should have no limits on it. He was effectively a socialist. He believed that the administrative government of the United States should be run top down by the elites. He not only got us into World War One, he then used World War One as a pretext to basically go after his political opponents with the Sedition Act. Woodrow Wilson was a horrible, horrible, horrible president. And the fact that for a long time he was considered one of our better presidents speaks to how dumb America's historical class is. <laughs> the reason a lot now it's interesting that he he one of the first thing he brought up was was racism, and it's really interesting where he puts presidents again that like say owned slaves or had some other types of uh, of things. If, if he did someone like Andrew Jackson, if you put him in there, um, how he'll put how if there will be consistency amongst you know racist attitudes um, for that too. Now, yeah, I mean, Wilson won his second term, though, based off of his campaigning and, and, and trying to continue to campaign and, and the idea that he was keeping the Americans out of the war because the war broke out and then he ended up winning a reelection um, during the war. And again, it was before American involvement. And but largely, again, based on his his staying out of World War One, which was a popular opinion amongst Americans at that time. Now, one thing Woodrow Wilson has gotten a lot of praise for is maybe how he tried to address the war uh, or like with the 14 points, address the end of the war and trying to create 
a system that uh, uh, is supposed to prevent war. And some of those things were brought into the Treaty of Versailles. And the Treaty of Versailles, of course, is disastrous in the way that it is going to influence the Second War. But a lot of the things that he had proposed into the Treaty of Versailles do not actually go in there. If you want to compare the Treaty of Versailles with his 14 points, you're going to want to do that for sure. So again, I see uh, Woodrow Wilson as a very polarizing figure with that sort of thing. And it does, I agree with him too, that it has changed a lot over time about how he has been viewed. For sure it's getting more and more negative it has been getting more and more negative but the role of world war one is usually where a lot of people will put him more as a positive thing and then you know his criticisms and other things about government expansion and all that kind of stuff but um uh, going as far as saying he's like a socialist i think that's a socialist wouldn't wouldn't say that a lot of america's historical class likes him is because they again like the administrative state the administrative state for those who don't know that's the idea of the executive branch really should run the government, that the legislature is sort of a vestigial organ. The president should be, as Woodrow Wilson says, as big a man as he can be, as big a man as is capable of filling the office. He was a big fan of how German government was run. He was a big fan of the idea that the, the government was sort of the be-all, end-all, was Woodrow Wilson. A lot of people felt that way, though, about, like, Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler was very popular amongst a lot of Western states, right? Because he's anti-communist and was uh, um, uh, vehemently against that and, and persecuted that. Um, but then getting the country out of the depression, uh, their depression, Germany's was so much bigger. Um, that was a common thought amongst uh, a lot of people in the West. Awful, awful person, awful president. He is definitely in the F category. Again, I'm interested to see where his consistency so is going to be. This is where I really wish that there was like a, a, a D category right here. In, in what would be the D category, but we're going to have to push him into the F category because we really have no other choice. There is no D category here. Uh, LBJ definitely goes in that category, in that yeah. F category. So LBJ, awful president. The sole bright spot in the LBJ administration was a bright spot, and that was the Civil Rights Act. The Civil yeah. Rights Act, which is exactly right on banning all sorts of state practices of discrimination, is wrong when it comes to encroaching into private rights of association uh, and, and is wrong in some of its, its broad outlines as far as how to deal with the private sector. Everything else is garbage. The, the extension of the welfare state is garbage. The Vietnam War and his strategy in pursuing the Vietnam War graduated equilibrium. Horrible, horrible garbage. Right, so LBJ, terrible... He's president. so extreme in his he rhetoric. He definitely goes like, in that bottom sure. tier along. Everything's just like there's no, there's no nuanced uh, you know, position with that. Now, um, uh, LBJ was heavily influenced by, by FDR. Right? Uh, it's working for him before. So the idea of expansive government, for sure. Um, but again, where he was saying, and, and again, you usually see this with a lot of people, regardless um, of a lot of your political spectrum, is uh, the big push of, again, the Civil Rights Act and him being pretty much the biggest part of the whole civil rights uh, movement, the whole civil rights movement of the uh, in the 60s there. Now, remember, he takes over after uh, JFK's assassination, right? So continuing some of those things and actually taking it a lot further than JFK ever was. So now we put him at F tier. I think that that is... Um, you're, you'd be take yeah you would be taking a thing and again the only way you'd be putting that there is again if you don't like the idea of uh, like you saying um, the welfare state and that and yeah I mean I guess you could see that so with Woodrow Wilson other people who belong in that bottom tier I don't know if I put them at the bottom the though like that, I think that's that's really uh, the bottom FDR that's so interesting I mean it is interesting I I'm not surprised at him putting him there but I mean uh, I don't think they're F tier presidents. We're putting the bottom of all tiers that's, goes in that bottom tier despite low. historians attempts to paint fdr as a wonderful president it's pretty obvious that he lengthened the great depression by as much as eight years according to a study from ucla anderson I've heard business that, but... school through his horrific economic policies he basically portrayed anybody who was not under his thumb as a quote-unquote malefactor of great wealth he was a class warrior in the extreme uh, he really didn't know much about economic policy like well, okay, I'm going to oh, of course let him. Context again is so important because you're talking about a president that was elected at the height of the depression with the biggest problem overall being unemployment. I mean, that's what most of the economic policies are about. We're getting it's the new deal. It's about getting people working, right? More than anything else. I mean, uh, Shapiro's definitely looking at this big picture because one thing that's for sure about FDR is um, our our size of the government that was created under FDR will never shrink again. Not really, not to what it used to be before that. And that was what a lot of people say, again, if you're much more a proponent of, of um, um, small government, say that that is a lasting neg a negative effect. But understanding that those things, a lot of people say those things were necessary. 
for the depression, right? To create those type of programs, work programs, and just try, try to let, help, help people survive, right? During the depression. So again, big picture. Yeah, a lot of people say that's that the government, we have been relying on our government a lot more ever since then. That is a fact for sure. Um, but context is important understanding uh, the necessity of those things during the depression. I'm glad that he was great on the radio, but aside from his pursuit he of was. World War II, uh, that's pretty much it. Now, this is why, again, that D category would have been good because FDR as a World War II leader was good, except for, you know, the whole unfortunate imprisoning 100,000 Japanese Americans sure. in uh, in camps. That, that that was not so good. But other than yeah. that, his World War II pursuit was good. I That's wish fair. that he were in that D category, just like I wish that, that LBJ were in that D category so we could at least recognize the good things they did alongside all the bad things. But some people have FDR in, like, the top tier of presidents. No effing way. No way. Okay. So if he does keep bringing up, like, with all three of those guys, he brought up positive things. So, I mean, I guess his whole thing is that there, there's F, F tier, the bottom tier can be people, can be people that did positive things, right? I'll be sure to see how he, he progressed that. Like, is he saying nothing ever negative came from anybody that he puts at S tier? It'll be interesting because, again, I'm looking, I'm, I'm kind of interested in the consist, uh, consistency. Okay, other that. presidents who belong in that bottom tier of presidents. I'm put Richard Nixon in that bottom tier of presidents. I think Nixon was a terrible president. I know there are a lot of Republicans who have sort of a warm spot for Nixon, mainly they because— do. Uh, he was not George McGovern, but putting aside Watergate, That's not saying much. which again is like the least of his sins, considering that LBJ bugged Barry Goldwater's headquarters in 1964. He instituted price and wage controls. He did not dismantle the vast government apparatus that was built by LBJ. In fact, he exacerbated that. He pursued the opening of China, which has resulted in the rise of a dictatorial empire Interesting. Uh, that, that now threatens American power. In they were already dictatorial before <laughs> Nixon. You're talking the Maoist era and, and, and leading up to that. Southeast Asia. So uh, not not a big Nixon fan. I know there are a lot of people who are. I'm not. You could plausibly put him in the C category, but uh, I'll put him in the F just to be even-handed. And uh, finally. It is hard to differentiate sometimes because you have different uh, parties. If you have like a Democrat like, um, like LBJ and a Republican like Nixon, of how similar a lot of things they were. Um, were about uh, specifically like the Vietnam War. And that's one of the biggest things people talk about. The, the biggest similarity uh, between Republicans and Democrats in the United States is largely speaking, they've often been unified in uh, the idea of, 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 of intervention of, of, of war, right? And how like American involvement in so many wars has totally crossed party lines and it's been vehemently pro when America has gone to war in a lot of these uh, a lot of these scenarios from older times to present times. As the last person who goes in that F category, I, well, no, sorry, there, there are two more for the F category. One is going to be um, Barack Obama. So, so Obama goes in the F Call category. That. I think he was an awful president. I think he did horrific work, mainly with regard to his rhetoric. Now, I do wonder if with this, you have to consider recency bias, right? Recency bias. And what we mean by that is it's, it's very new. And also someone like like Shapiro, who, you know, is in his kind of late 30s, as somebody who was like a, you know, full grown, integrated adult at the time. So you're much more aware of politics when you are ingrained and you are in your for informative years when you're alive. Right. So you, you have that. So you wonder about that is just the recency bias. So whether it's pro or against like a president, if you are, again, uh, somebody, a, a major part of society in your formative years. You're going to have a recency bias in one way or the other. And I wonder if that's what's going to happen here with his uh, criticism of, of President Obama. In terms of his legislation, I think Obamacare was an atrocity. And I think that his spending plans with, with stimulus and raising us to $4 trillion budgets, it's helped destroy the, the economic future of the United States. So that's bad enough. But between 2008 and 2012... Now notice he did say uh, trillion, uh, trillions in budget, not necessarily deficit, because deficits have raised under presidents of, of different uh, of different type of policies that's just always been a major thing and that goes back a lot again again to the debt that was created in world war ii that we've really never come out of and i'm sorry not necessarily world war ii but the depression like we went into a debt that we never necessarily got out of barack obama morphed from a president who sort of campaigned on almost a Clintonian third way as a guy who wasn't for red states and not blue states, but the United States. And in 2012, he went just hardcore intersectionality. <laughs> really who opposes is... me is a racist. America can be divvied into various victimized groups that can be cobbled together in a new rising ascendant majority against the old America is extremely damaging. And um, I think that that 
is going to be the future of American politics for quite a while. I think the Democratic Party never quite got over the Obama coalition of 2012. They've been trying to pursue it ever since, and it has broken American politics in ways large and small. So Obama goes in that bottom category. And then I don't think there's as much of of like unchangeable things that happened in necessarily the Obama administration. Again, it's, it's so recent. Like as somebody who studies history like me and is not involved in current political analysis, like I, I have to see things years and years ahead you have to see the legacies i mean he's got george w bush on there which again i i think of is still in that it's still very much in that realm of recency right and and to make you know it's it's going to be hard to to make some of these judgments if i'm making a tier list i would also i would be very it would be very difficult to me to put almost any president that is somebody that was a, around since i was like a teenager like i just think again recency is, is so difficult and it's um, you don't know the historical impact till sometimes a generation after, right? And uh, that may be happening here. And again, I'm not going to uh, come down on an argument either way on on that kind of thing. But interesting, again, how he's putting like these worst people and the rhetoric he was using for, especially the first three presidents he put on this list, and then putting a recent president out there at that similar level, right? Now, if this is where he would say if he had a D, he would put it, because he said that for Nixon, right? But uh, it looks like he was pretty vehemently, you know, and supportive of uh, of Obama being at the bottom. And finally, last guy who goes in that category is, of course, James Buchanan, who is uh, <laughs> the the president just before the Civil War. Okay, now, to be this fair, is where I was I'm interested. I'm not sure the Civil War happens because of James Buchanan. I don't think he does much to stop it. And so you have a bunch of events that are happening outside of Buchanan's control. Doesn't mean he was a good president. He was a terrible president. Okay, so okay, yeah, I was wondering what would happen in 1850s and 1920s. What he would do for that again two biggest catastrophes internally for the united states the civil war and the great depression so putting buchanan down there you see that on the uh him on the bottom list uh, bottom of tiered lists across political platforms and that's you know easy to do again when you talk about the effects afterwards of you know trying to avoid and and and, and so many of these presidents from the 40s to the 50s a lot of people say were people that were simply just trying to avoid the slavery issue and didn't want to actually tackle it and wanted to pretty much put it off to the next president, to the next president, because there was seemed to be no right answer to please everybody. And that's that's just obviously the case. Now we've got your top category, and we've got the, uh, the F category. Now we're gonna do some people who are in the middle. So in the A category, which is just below S, we'll put Calvin Coolidge. So Calvin Coolidge, really underrated president, because Calvin Coolidge is the last president in American history to truly understand that the presidency should not be a major factor in your life. And Cal this is, I was super interested in the 1920s presidency he was going to have there. Um, people that were, again, about smaller government and smaller regulation. But of course, we're going to lead to the Great Depression, right? Coolidge is going to be somebody heavily criticized for the policies um, that the government had that, that were just so loose or non-existent that led to the Great Depression. So seeing someone like Coolidge up there, again, you would only see from somebody probably that that is describes themselves as a libertarian but looking in perspective of saying was that okay because look what's going to happen afterwards with uh the depression of the amount of uh, non-existent regulation that will indeed lead to the depression so not surprised to see that on here um from from shapiro calvin coolidge was famously taciturn they used to call him silent cal there's a famous story about calvin coolidge where he was at some sort of dinner party and a reporter came up to him and she said to him now, President Coolidge, I've just made a bet with somebody, and she said, my bet is that I can make you say more than two words. And he said, you lose. And that, that was sort of how Coolidge was. But Coolidge also had a, a wonderful understanding of the Constitution and Declaration of Independence. He gave a speech on July 4th, uh, and, and it's one of the great orations in American history about what For a America right? <laughs> means and, and why the foundational principles of the Declaration of Independence had led to the prosperity of the United States, how the freedoms and liberties guaranteed to individuals have led to the prosperity of the United States, that we were created by the Declaration, we were created by the Constitution, we do not get to create it. This is it's the really romance. Good stuff. One of the this, is, this is the romance of, uh, of, uh, of American founding fathers and, and stuff like that, where people really take it to believe what they want it to believe. And also don't understand that the Mar United States is a very different place in the 1920s than it was in 1776 or 1787 or, you know, whenever it's going to be. And that's such a dissociation. I mean, um, this is post-industrial revolution, right? Someone like Coolidge and these presidents before that he was talking about didn't have to deal with that, of what had come as a result of it, of um, what had business has done and how it's completely infiltrated 
and has the ability to infiltrate government unlike how it did not have that ability to do in earlier in the 18th century or even in the 19th century a very different time and yeah again if you're a strict constitutionalist and say it should only be about policies that they were aware of and thinking about in the 18th century then yeah great you're going to put someone like coolidge there but if you're somebody that talks about modern modern problems need modern solutions then yeah you're going to look at coolidge much more um uh, uh critically because wasn't addressing the modern problems right of, of 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 how the economy is structured and how it could collapse in such a way because there was no or if you want i don't want to call them safety nets or whatever it is things to be able to impact the the, the economy um so it can't be exploited and it can't crash the tragedies of american history is the coolidge stepped down and herbert hoover took over and herbert hoover was in fact quite a bad president who else Easy to put Hoover here? there, though. We'll put Reagan in that A category. Now, Reagan's big okay. problem as a, as a president I thought he would, a... I thought, I honestly wondered if he would put him as S tier. So you can see there's some romanticism when he's keeping, you know, the, Lincoln wasn't a founding father, but kind of gets thrown into that category. Of course, that he didn't get the spending under control. He was also saddled with the Democratic Senate for, for part of his term. In terms of breaking the back of inflation in the United States through his Fed chief, Paul Volcker, uh, in terms of radically lowering taxes in the United States and leading to two decades of growth, in terms of escalating defense spending, particularly on Star Wars and breaking the power of the Soviet Union, Ronald Star Wars Reagan ridiculous, goes though. near the top <laughs> of the heap. So he ends up with Calvin Coolidge, who was one of his heroes, by the way, uh, in that A category. Uh, other presidents who end up in that A category probably have to put Thomas Jefferson in the A category for his okay. his Federalist view of American see, government, well, what we would call Federalist now, Very meaning high. he wanted to devolve more powers to the states. Also, the Louisiana Purchase, which is one of those weird moments in American history where he saw a good deal, recognized he didn't have the constitutional authority to make it, and then went ahead and made it anyway. But Jefferson, well, yeah, I mean, it's more Monroe than anything, but supported it when the news got back it's not like they were able to pick up a phone and say hey i'm over here with the french and by the way they want to sell all of louisiana not just um you know new orleans and it went on the authority that those that were on behalf of the united states you know they they're the ones who really accepted the deal first before it even got back to jefferson so but yeah and is widely regarded as one of our better presidents i'll put ulysses s grant I think in this in this category. So there's been a, a great sort of revision. About Interesting. A lot of people see him polarizing as yes, this great leader from the Civil War, but as an administrator after the war, unsuccessful or less successful. How Ulysses S. Grant is portrayed in American history. Ulysses S. Grant originally was portrayed as sort of a drunken sot who yeah. lucked his way through the Civil War and then into the presidency, and then was responsible for the rise of pork politics and sort of gilded era corruption that's not really accurate if you're going to remember ulysses s grant's presidency for anything, for that. remember it for the fact that he presided over reconstruction and one of the great tragedies right. of american history is that reconstruction ends with ulysses s grant's term in office and uh, jim crow really begins and and gains a serious hold and the kkk True. basically becomes a powerful force in the south after ulysses s grant leaves office revisionist historians are now now kind of looking back on the, the grant era and realizing that he was a, a stalwart defender of uh, freedoms being extended to newly freed slaves in the South. B okay, yeah, I mean, I can see some of that. A lot of people saying, though, that, that the Reconstruction, yeah, didn't go far enough. Didn't go far enough to do whatever to the South, what it was, destroy the whole status quo there, because the, the status quo does not change in the South. During presidents, so people who are like, okay, you know, kind of okay, so I'll put JFK in, well, now, nah, you know, I'm putting him as a C. JFK goes as a C, hmm. one of the more overrated presidents in American history, I am just, I'm going to let you finish, you know, Ben. I have noticed a lot more respect amongst conservatives, definitely for JFK, right? As somebody who was a Democrat and was, uh, you know, whatever. If people, if you're going to be one that just totally just define things by, if it's an R or a D next to your name and not understanding any kind of historical context or how the platforms of these political groups, these political pl uh, parties have changed over the years, then yeah, but it is interesting how he's he's getting accepted a lot more because in the modern context, like he is not a very liberal president, if you want to use those definitions, um, because you know what a Democrat was in the 1960s is very different than what a lot of people might say um, right now. History has been more kind to JFK because of the assassination than it otherwise would have been. That's the man true. was responsible for a wide variety of debacles during his first couple of years in office, including the Bay of Pigs debacle. Right. However, he was a fervent anti-communist who did cut taxes. Um, but as far as him being like one of our better presidents, I don't see any evidence of that. By the way, our, our engagement in Vietnam begins with, with JFK. It does not begin with LBJ. That's well, 
Okay, now yeah, you, you have to go back to uh you, you really have to go back to you have to go back into the fifties, right? With the end of the war into the Vietnam War. Remember now remember the Vietnam War is not just the United States and Vietnam. It goes back to France, right? And when that ends in the mid fifties, American involvement basically starts right there. And that, that goes back uh actually like Eisenhower years. So yeah, you, you can't you can't assess you you can't assess American involvement in Vietnam to any one president. You just can't. Grover Cleveland will put in the, the B category. So Grover Cleveland, the only president to serve twice non consecutively. Grover Cleveland uh, was responsible we the, uh, for industrial making revolution, sure the federal second industrial revolution presidents. I'm sure what it was supposed to be. He um, famously rejected a stimulus package directed at uh, Texas drought relief, saying that there is no constitutional warrant for this which is something you'd never hear from a president today. He goes in the B category. Uh, I'll put William Howard Taft in the just He loves the government doesn't do anything, right? And again, he uh, Shapiro is, is somebody that talks about limited government uh, a lot, right? He says, you know, a libertarian that way. Um, but you will see his, you know, at, at times we've seen ab about him about uh, it, foreign intervention, though. Category. Certainly William Howard Taft was a far more conservative figure than Teddy Roosevelt. We'll get to Teddy in just one second. Yep. Well, William Howard Taft uh, was a, a sort of retrenchment of traditional Republican values. He went on to serve on the Supreme Court of the United States. So sort of a figure that's been lost to history, because, and, and people make jokes about him because he was extremely fat. Yeah. But You're the stuck truth in is that he was actually right? a pretty good president. And if it had not been for Teddy Roosevelt and his ego trips, then William Howard Taft would be more fondly remembered as the person who uh, defeated Woodrow Wilson in 1916, which in uh, 1912 rather, which would have uh, changed the course of American history for the better in a lot of ways. Um, Harry Truman is a, is a B president. Okay. He okay. tends toward the sea. I used to see uh, what he was going to say about Truman, um, especially if he did not, if he put, you know, FDR at the bottom tier. And this is simply just because Truman didn't have to run. I mean, he was he was in, in the in administration right during the um, during the Great Depression. And that's where he doesn't like FDR's policies. But, you know, continued what I think a lot of uh, what FDR was thinking. So. Probably more as one, he's putting more as one that, you know, uh, approved the use of atomic bombs to end World War II. Let's see. Uh, I would say that he's a B president because of his uh, cold warrior nature, um, because of his handling of the end of World War II. I have a personal fondness as a Jew for Harry Truman, as is virtually all American Jews do, because of his willingness to uh, signal American support for the establishment of the state of Israel. The reason he doesn't rank higher on the list is because he had some dictatorial tendencies with regard to uh, unions. He's going to be supportive, again, of like the creation of Israel, because that's going to happen in um, 47, or at least, at least the UN passing the resolution for it and everything. So you can see context is going to be important for him, anything to deal with uh, Middle Eastern politics, especially at the, 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 um, the preservation of Israel, right, as, with, with him as a Jew himself. Uh, there, there's a famous steel case in which he intervened in a fairly illegal way. Uh, and then... Not only that, his policy toward China was really bad. He should have provided significantly more support to Shanghai Shek in the face of uh, the Maoist revolution in China. His failure to do so was instrumental in the rise of communist China. I'll this is where, uh, get me if, uh, let me know if, I, if I'm wrong on this, that I see inconsistencies when he talks about foreign intervention, right? It's like he, he put as, as negatives for say uh woodrow wilson and or fdr uh, as they saying he was saying getting us into world war one and world war two but then now you've seen a couple times where he has talked about uh, uh presidents and 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 you know um like that may stay out of those conflicts like he's saying americans should have got involved in the the chinese civil war which was this massive catastrophe in supporting chiang kai shek who again was on the opposite side of mao and the communists saying the Americans should have gotten involved in that conflict, but then criticizing, you know, for getting involved in the world wars. So is it just a difference? Is a difference being that should have been more involved in, 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 in Cold War politics, right? And, and specifically Truman Doctrine, which again is going to be named after him, which is the whole idea that the Americans should stop the spread of communism. So he seems to be very uh, uh, pro about that, right? Like very in support of... American involvement, probably even maybe even militarily, right? Uh, for again, something like the the, the with that with with the, uh, the the Chinese Civil War, probably gonna you know if he talks about Korea or Vietnam, saying that we should get involved with those. But it's like it's okay if it's intervening if it's communism, 
but what not fascism or something like that? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Is there, is there, do you think there's a lack of consistency that he's talking about American foreign intervention? Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but let me know. Also his handling of the, uh, his handling of the Korean war left uh, some things to be desired. President Trump, I think is, is a B president. Now, I think in terms of policy, okay, he'd be so close before he gets into Trump, I was very interested in seeing that because again, a lot of people that you find that likes, uh, like President Trump, uh, uh, they like, you know, Ben Shapiro as well, conservative and stuff like that. So we'll see what he says. But I'm interested. I I, I was wondering what he would he would uh, he would do there. I was telling you about recency bias. So that's a very real thing. And if he's going to have recency bias with President Obama, will he have it with uh, Trump? So we'll see what his you know gripe is going to be. Maybe it's going to be more of maybe more about rhetoric than actually like policy. That would be my guess. Closer to an A. I think in rhetoric, the problem is that he's really been self-defeating, the, the president. I think most people will understand this. So he's had some real rhetorical highs. I mean, he gave a great speech in Mount Rushmore, for example, that I talked extensively about. He gave an excellent speech in Poland talking about the defense of Western civilization. But he, okay, but like, people don't care about speeches very much, right? They, they only care, they might care of a speech about someone's speech of somebody they already listened to. Nobody's aroused, people aren't, generally people aren't aroused by speeches by people they don't agree with or something they didn't go into that speech already liking them i think this is a, a very romantic approach to presidential leadership that people have had again of people of, of all, all all political spectrum right you go into them and you're inspired if you're already on the verge of being inspired or you already are inspired i think too much is put into that it's also why i think political you know, debates have very little impact when you have like presidential debates have very little impact on people. They don't change people's minds. There, people are looking for, um, for how you describe it. I guess just like want to be self assured. They want to be reassured, right? They want to be, um, yeah, that way. He has said many great things in the culture war that I think are worthy of saying. He has also said some incredibly wild and irresponsible things over the course of his presidency. Uh, he has led to less support for his agenda items that should be wildly more popular. I mean, the fact That's is fair. that heading into the election, over 55% of Americans said that they were better off than they were four years ago, and then he performed at like 46% of the popular vote. There's only one reason for that, and that's because he was so rhetorically irresponsible. Again, on policy, Makes you got to put Trump up with, with people like Ronald Reagan and Calvin Coolidge. Uh, in terms of rhetoric, you got to put him much further down the list, and so he ends up on average being in that B category. He is okay. not an F, as so many people keep saying. That that's ridiculous. He is not even close to in the same category as uh, as people like Woodrow Wilson, for example. I did forget one F, by the way. Okay, so that makes sense. I understand what approach he was taking there again, I, and and I was I was interested to know what where he would put, you know, President Trump's rhetoric in his evaluation of him as a makes sense that way if he didn't then yeah uh, i would have assumed he would have put him probably around eight here why jimmy carter was enough jimmy carter was a garbage president <laughs> so well if you all... like presidents though that don't talk much and and do do that like he has praised others uh you, you do that with with carter please like all historians i forget jimmy carter uh, jimmy carter was uh, not he has, a, forget, a he has forgotten president. a lot maybe slightly better than people recall in the sense that he actually did try to bring down inflation in the latter years of his administration okay, yeah. yeah did so unsuccessfully um but he's the quiet slightly better guy. does not mean good he was still a horrible horrible president so horrible that he got himself blown quiet out guy. by ronald reagan who was largely considered uh, by the media to he be does. He the, gets, this sort of i mean sort reagan of comes in and has the most uh um dominant electoral you know results ever after carter you figure we are going to jump into that c category but first let's talk about our sponsors over at ring it's pretty important to know who's at your door whether you are home or not it is doorbell what's season. going on what do you think so far time of the year um, your front door that is definitely you know, true at my house we've got you workers going in video and, and give your comments so far are dropping off uh, again i made a couple ring. things i wanted to get some, all of this some hustle and some bustle feedback from you all about from your phone if somebody stops by or something is going on ring will let you know the consistency is is ben shapiro being consistent it's not just the best time to have ring it is the best time to give it as well ring makes the perfect holiday gift so this holiday season give somebody the gift of peace of mind ring has security products for every corner of your home inside now best of all you can see it all 
in the Ring app. Go check them out right now because Ring has everything you need to keep an eye on home this holiday season and throughout the year. You can see and speak to whoever is at the door from anywhere with video doorbells. You can keep an eye on every corner of your house with easy to install indoor and outdoor cams. Help protect your whole home with Ring Alarm. It's a powerful, affordable is everywhere home now. security system you can easily install is that yourself the bad when you move. My wife's <laughs> look at the bad guy. The the house. That was one of the first That's things that, that we like. did. They're super <laughs> satisfied with our Ring service. For a limited time, go to ring.com slash Ben for special holiday offers. Again, that is ring.com slash Ben. It makes me feel Feel safer it makes my wife feel safer it'll make you feel safer as well again check them out at ring.com slash ben that is ring.com make sure people know his wife, special his wife holiday offers feels safe. your home safer <laughs> and feel more secure with ring ring.com slash ben okay c presidents so i'm gonna put uh teddy roosevelt in the c category again were there a d category he would be in the d category uh, so he's somebody that on most lists would probably be higher as, as somebody now he again teddy roosevelt is very much a reflection of the time period he's like you know right at the heart of the second industrial revolution where you're seeing the economic exploitation and the social issues that have come from industrial revolution as somebody that was trying to address that by addressing big business because that's what the people i mean that's what the people wanted he was popular in that aspect but again um he doesn't you know shapiro isn't taking the perspective of the times of when these presidents, he's not using context. He's, he's not using a lot of context, um, which would, I think, uh, um, inform his opinions. He's taken much more of a broader perspective, and that's fair too, because you have to be able to do that as well, because he's looking at influence later on with uh, someone like Roosevelt. Yeah, and they put him on Mount Rushmore, right? Roosevelt was the first progressive president. He foreshadowed Woodrow Wilson believed in the rise of the administrative state and this, this massive federal infrastructure. He pursued trust busting, which was really an irresponsible policy driven by uh, populist need to break up big companies for no actual legal reason. Uh, legal reasons, but for social reasons, right? Because of um, the conditions of the working class at that time. As a result, again, of the biggest disparity um, in wealth that we've ever had in American history. I, I don't think that Teddy was a particularly good president. Uh, he did have expansionist tendencies that, that definitely maximized the uh, territorial holdings of the United States, or at least protectorates of the United States. Um, but overall, not a big Teddy Roosevelt fan. Uh, James K. Polk uh, is an oft-neglected figure. Uh, he was responsible but for very impactful. widening the borders of the United States into Oregon. Manifest and, Destiny, and, Mexico. Uh, the beginnings of uh, places like California in 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 recognizing the Mid Texas Republic probably. and the Mexican-American War. He probably goes in the B category. Also, the, the only president in American history to run for one term um, and then win and pledge at the beginning, I'm only going to be a one-term president and leave, uh, which, honestly, that would be more of that would be good. Calvin Coolidge ended up doing that, but I don't think he pledged to do that at the very beginning. Uh, Dwight Eisenhower, a lot of people would put him in, like, the A category. I, I put him, I would even put him as a C. I'm not a big fan of Dwight Eisenhower's foreign policy. I think that Dwight Eisenhower... I mean, said to see that uh, that I thought he would be a little bit higher, at least C tier, for him. Let's hear why. Foreign policy, which was supposedly realist, actually in many ways effectuated many of the problems that we see today in places like the Middle East. Uh, he supported the wrong side in the Suez Canal crisis. Uh, yeah. He basically did nothing see, as it, the Russians steamrolled the Hungarians. During it's, it's 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 again more context of his you know personal connection with with the Middle East. Uh, that that seems to be something he's he's tied on with that too, but. Okay, not so some uh, not doing much about. So he he is critical. He's not like critical. So like Hungarian Revolution and saying should have you know helped them against the the the, the squashing of the this Hungarian Revolution um, by the Soviet Union. And now he's been critical of the Korean War, not the the the, the intervention there and China. So you can see he's very much about uh, it seems about American foreign intervention. Which again breaks away from you would think a, a lot of what people would say about someone that's a libertarian, like he says to be, but definitely is somebody that has said that there should have been more involvement, specifically uh, uh, communism and potential spread of communism dealing with the Soviet Union. In the Hungarian Revolution in in uh, in fifty six. Yeah, I'm I'm actually not a huge Dwight Eisenhower fan. Uh, uh, overrated. Uh, and then finally, in C presidents, yeah, uh, I'm going to put oh, okay. George W. Bush as a C level president. I uh, thought maybe around a B2, uh, uh, maybe even A, just because of it, of the, the war against terror, which I, I figured he would also be a big uh, supporter of. Largely because of the last three years of his administration. He started okay. off as a sort of compromise figure, and then he became the, the guy who led us through 9 11 in mm. what I think was truly heroic fashion. And then by the end of his term, when he was, you know, 
saying that we had to step in and save capitalism by by destroying capitalism and when he was not taking on the subprime mortgage crisis i think in a responsible way the big problem for, for bush for. is that bush was never capable of explaining himself and sort of assumed that history would explain him for him and i, I just don't think that's ever a good strategy okay so there you have 22 okay. presidents there are a few who on in retrospect i wish that i had listed here andrew jackson should be on want to pause it there andrew jackson where is he going to put him most people put him bottom because of the uh, the Indian Removal Act and stuff like that. So on this list, he probably ends up being a B president mainly because of his policy with regard to Native Americans. He would rank higher if it were not for his a rather nasty policy, uh, to say the least. B, he's B with that. This is a lot higher than I thought I would see from him with Andrew Jackson. With regard to who is, uh, again, one of those presidents that's doing the opposite of like JFK, which is getting less, uh, he's getting less popular as time goes on, right? He was saying, I was saying earlier how he's, like someone like JFK has become more, you know, popular over time, but Andrew Jackson is quickly going the negative way. I'm surprised he put him as high as he did. Are two Native Americans fighting back the nullification crisis, uh, ensuring the United States did not break apart. B president, probably historically speaking, 10 years ago, you would have said he was an A president. There are a couple other presidents that no, we can rank a, here. A, I don't think, nobody was saying he was A 10 years ago. It's, it's much further back than that, his criticism. But uh, there you have it. There it is. What do you think? What did I get wrong here? Did I get any of them wrong? Of course I didn't. But let us know down in the comments what you thought. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. We will see you here next time. All right, let's wrap this up. Back in three two one all right so that is ben shapiro conservative superstars tiered list of major american presidents there you can see it wasn't a, a all of the presidents which would have taken you know forever but a lot of the consequential presidents or, and ones that again have been very polarizing so i made a few comments um you know throughout the video about uh, trying to give context you know again that's something i do is context of when these presidents uh, when they were in charge but then, you know, um, also I was given some predictions and trying to identify things like, is there consistency amongst his criteria that he's using? And what do you think about that? I mean, what do you think about this list? Um, do you agree or disagree with some of the things that, that I said there? Um, if you have a tiered list, if you want to go ahead and tier these, you know, the president specifically that he has there, um, you can do it. Put it in the comments. Be respectful to each other, of course. Please do that. Internet can be a great place for uh, dialogue, but also be a very. Uh, BC again, for the most part, I wasn't going to go and just go through each of these and be like, yeah, I agree. It should be here, here, here. Maybe you wanted that. But again, I'm more about giving historical context and trying to evaluate the criteria that people use, trying to identify that as a successful criteria or is it one that, uh, again, is flawed, right? And that's kind of what I was. Anyways, uh, it was fun to check this out. Uh, Again, someone as influential as him as being such an important voice, especially amongst uh, younger conservatives and having that kind of important understand, you know, what people like this are saying, because they do, they, they impact history. They really do. In that. So um, anyways, all right. With that, again, the original video link is down below. If you want to support uh, Ben's original video there, I don't know if maybe they have a link over there that you can go to the actual tiered list if you want to actually make this tier i'm sure if you just go to the tier maker website that you could you know your own there and then if you want to link that or uh, whatever it is you know go for it all right anyways there's some links to some other stuff down below if you can check those out and with that we'll see you next time bye